Hello everyone, welcome to episode four of my new YouTube series, Beauty and Brains. Today's video is a very serious topic. Today's video is dedicated to Cuba. This is not a social justice movement to where you can post something on your Instagram and think that you're politically correct. This is about justice, plain and simple. In this video, I'm going to talk about what's happening in Cuba versus what the corrupt media is posting. They're posting a completely different narrative. So I wanna talk about what's happening in Cuba. And then I wanna transition into, could this happen in America? Or have we already been seeing signs of socialism and communism in America? I'm feeling a little bit heavy right now. Um, as I sat down to film this video, I opened up Instagram for a second and I saw a video of Cuban police breaking down a woman's door with her children and they shot her husband in front of her and her children and they slaughtered him like an animal and then they drug him out. It's just something you can't unsee and it's something that, I mean, my heart is just heavy and I know that this is not the first time or the last time. Um, you know, it's one thing to hear about communism and dictatorships. It's another thing to see it with your own eyes and even more devastating to have it happen to you. So first and foremost, I am praying for Cuba. I've been diligent in praying and I will continue to pray for the freedom of Cuba. So let's jump in first by talking about what's happening. Side note, this is the oil I mentioned on my stories last night. As always, as far as makeup goes, if you're interested in anything that I put on my face, I'll have it linked down below, but this is the oil I mentioned last night. I've been using day and night. It's really great. Thousands of Cubans are protesting in the streets after 62 years of a communist regime and being under a dictatorship. This is not something that is new. If anything, this is something that is a long time coming. They're in the streets waving an American flag, which is a beacon of the freedom they so desperately want. And may I remind you that Hong Kong and Korea both also flew the American flag as a symbol of freedom from their communist and dictatorships. The American flag is the universal symbol for freedom. If you haven't seen my last video where I talked about wokeness destroying America, these are the types of things that I'm talking about when America teaches its citizens to hate its country, but places around the world fly the American flag when they try to get out of their oppressive dictatorships, communist regimes. In Cuba, you can't criticize or go against your government. They'll kill you. So for thousands of Cubans to be rushing to the streets, coming together, wanting to end their communist regime, this is huge. These people have no food, no water, no medicine. You have to wait hours in line to try to get gas, hours to try to get groceries. And when you get into the grocery store, there's no meat, no produce, it's all of like one brand of beans, like very limited food. Then once you pick out your food, you have to wait hours in line just to purchase the food if you can even afford to buy it in the first place. And I wrote down some of the numbers of how much things cost. And toilet paper is a dollar a roll, just for one, a dollar. When most Cubans make $25 a month. One pound of rice? 200 US dollars. The highest salary that someone like a doctor makes is $40 a month. If you need medicine, like a bottle of Tylenol, 100 US dollars. So it would take someone who's making $25 a month, four months to save up for one bottle of Tylenol. Not to mention you can only get money if you know someone in the US that can send it to you. And when they send it to you, it can take months to get there. A lot of Cubans are reporting that they send money through what they call the black market because the government takes so much money. So if you send $130 to someone in Cuba, to family in Cuba, the government takes 30, but they don't give you US dollars. They give you Cuban money. But then when you go try to buy things, they want US dollars or Euro. I saw one guy who has family in Cuba saying that now they're asking for Euros. I shared a video on my Instagram story today from a woman who has family in Cuba and she was pretty young. Um, she was saying that she doesn't hear anyone from her generation speaking up in America, so she wanted to give the facts. And she talked about them not having food and water and medicine. She said at 7 p.m. every night, the government shuts off their power and their water. Every night when the sun goes down. 
they shut it off. The government, the rich, the people in power in Cuba show all of these nice restaurants and hotels and casinos, but Cubans aren't allowed to go there. They're not allowed to book rooms there. Not to mention, they wouldn't be able to afford to book there, making $25 a month. The Cuban people's homes are not in great condition. Many don't even have working showers. They have to use a bucket to shower every day. I read today that the government has now shut off internet for Cubans, trying to limit their means of communication with the rest of the world. Something that is so odd to me is I saw a post of Fidel Castro. And when I first glanced at it, I was like, is that Trudeau? Like it looked just like Trudeau. I had to read the caption. I was like, oh, that's Castro. So I commented on the post and I was like, I literally thought that was Trudeau for a second. And so many people responded to me saying there's a conspiracy theory that Trudeau is Fidel Castro's son. And I was like, what? And I bring that up because of the girl's video I was just talking about that I posted on my story. In her video, she said that their currency in Cuba now is Canadian dollar. So I'm hearing a bunch of different reports, but I was like, wait, what? And it just like made me think for a second. I'm like, comment down below. Let me know if you guys have heard that theory. Let me know what you guys think. Leftists in America are now jumping on what the Cuban dictator is saying, which is that the US embargo is to blame, which is not accurate, is not true, because the embargo does not prevent fishermen from fishing. The dictatorship does. The embargo doesn't prevent businesses from being started. The dictatorship does. The people in power in Cuba, the dictator, the government, the rich, the powerful, they still have gas. They're still getting everything from the embargo. It's the Cuban people who need freedom from their oppressors, which is the communist regime that they're under. I will say it's ironic to me that the same people in the USA who spent the last year following unconstitutional orders, willingly giving up their freedoms, snitching on their neighbors for knowing their rights and wanting to maintain their freedom, are now jumping on SOS Cuba when these people can't even save the US. They don't even notice or recognize the socialist agenda being pushed here in America. And I hope everyone can see what's happening in Cuba and recognize when it happens in America, because this can happen in any country. Any country can devolve into communism. I've talked about this several times. I mean, Cubans didn't think it would ever happen to Cuba either, or else they would have done something to stop it. So let's talk about the Biden administration, how they're lying to everyone about what's happening in Cuba right now. So the Biden administration is trying to say that thousands of people are in the streets in Cuba because they're outraged about how many people have died from COVID and that they want access to the vaccine, which is not true. All you have to do is listen to the videos on the ground, listen to the people. That is not what they're upset about. I hope everyone pays attention to this moment when Biden and his administration covered up for a dictator trying to say, oh, no, 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 it's not because of communism. It's just because they want access to the vaccine. It's because they're upset about COVID. No, I'm pretty sure them screaming for freedom and liberty is because they've been oppressed for 62 years. Um, the New York Times went as far as to say that they were shouting freedom and other anti-government slogans. So according to our media, freedom is an anti-government slogan. That just had me like, did I just read that? Not that I'm surprised. They are just getting more bold and more bold about not trying to hide their agenda and how they really feel. In Biden's statement, he said, we stand with the Cuban people and their clarion call for freedom and relief from the tragic grip of the pandemic. Everyone knows no matter what side you fall on politically, that if Trump was in office, he would have been like, y'all need to do something or our troops are coming over there. I thought the statement was weak. And I mean, as usual, I don't expect Biden to assert any kind of power. He doesn't even know where he is half the time. Okay, um, hang on. Uh... It's also ironic to me that Biden is saying they should respect their right to peacefully protest when in America, we currently have several political prisoners from January 6th who didn't even go into the Capitol, who didn't commit any violence, who are being treated as criminals just because they were on the Capitol grounds. So the president of Venezuela asked Biden to lift sanctions so that they can aid the communist regime in Cuba. 
And can you imagine what Biden does? Chocolate, chocolate chip. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. He agreed. So Biden helped Venezuela so that Venezuela can help communist dictatorship in Cuba. I'm not making this up. You can go to the Department of Treasury and see the letter for yourself. I posted it on my story today. Biden isn't allowing Cubans to come here by boat who are making, you have to Google the types of boats that they have been making and that make. I don't even know how they make it. It is very sad. And they're not able to come here for asylum, yet the southern border is open. It makes no sense to me. Allow me to be clear. If you take to the sea, you will not come to the United States. To those who risk their lives doing so, this risk is not worth taking. Again, I repeat, do not risk your life attempting to enter the United States illegally. You will not come to the United States. There's this misconception that if you're for secure borders, you don't want people to move here. That is not how it is. We want people to come here the legal way so that we know who's coming here. But I find it hypocritical that Biden won't let people come here from Cuba on asylum the right way. But people can come here the illegal way and come through the no borders, which benefits human smugglers, human traffickers, cartel, drug smuggling, which crime is the highest it's ever been. And that's okay but you're not willing to accept people who are escaping a communist regime. If you're not familiar with what's been happening in Venezuela as well, I say this timeline because I think it puts so much into perspective because in Venezuela and in Cuba, it only took one generation for them to lose all of their freedoms. Last year, Trump placed sanctions on Cuba saying that no American could stay on Cuban owned property in Cuba hoping that there would be a revolution from the people to fight back against their oppressors. Because those sanctions didn't affect the people. Those sanctions affect the Cuban economy, which is used by the rich and by the government there. Because the Cubans can't get money there, right? They all say that they have to have money sent from the US, that Cuba won't give them money. I watched a podcast where family members of people in Cuba that are in the US said they all knew the sanctions Trump put on Cuba were good because it would punish the rich, the government in Cuba. I'll link a few podcasts and resources down in the description bar, but one Cuban man said that this is what happens when you let your government take your guns, when you let your government get so big. And then he also said that there are people saying what's happening in Cuba is a civil war, but it's not a civil war because the people have no guns. They have no weapons. They have nothing to defend themselves. They're just being murdered in the streets by the government, like animals. He said they don't even have alcohol. They can't even make like use bottles to throw. He said they have nothing. The thing about socialism and Marxism is that it always advocates for this utopia of a society, something that is not real. It seems too good to be true and it is too good to be true. It doesn't work and it will never work. They're empty promises from politicians telling you that they'll give you everything for free, everyone will be equal, you'll have nothing and you'll be happy, but it leads to destruction. Socialism always leads to destruction. Communism always leads to destruction, it leads to poverty. A socialist can sit in capitalism and can say it's terrible while drinking their $6 Starbucks drink, where a socialist in socialism will not be able to criticize their government. They won't have that freedom. Socialism destroys everything that it touches. Fidel promised social injustice. He promised human rights. He said, Cubans, you don't need guns. You don't need guns. And then he convinced the people to vote and support a socialist and then a communist regime. My experience with leftists in America who think socialism can work, that communism is good, is they're very arrogant and they've never experienced it. You will never see someone who comes from communism or socialism, you will never see them say, hey, yeah, you know what? It works. You know, look at how many people are escaping communism, who are escaping socialism. Compare that to how many people are escaping on boats fleeing from capitalism. Also, this makes me sad, but at the same time, I'm not surprised that all of the woke Latina and Latino influencers and celebrities are quiet. They're going about posting, you know, the Instagram 
business as usual, cars, bags, makeup, hair, you know, whatever their content is about saying nothing. When people are being slaughtered in the streets, don't have food, medicine, and you can't even take the time to post even one story to use your voice, to use your platform with influence to bring awareness to what's happening. You know, people come at me for being a Latina that thinks for herself, for not allowing someone to tell me who I can be or how I should vote because of my ethnicity. But no one's saying anything to all of the Latino influencers that are MIA, not saying anything, that have just disappeared, act like nothing's happening. And for the people that say what's happening in Cuba now is not political, unfortunately it is. That's the thing. People want to say, oh, it's not political. It's about human rights. Yes, it is about basic human rights. It is about God-given freedom. But politics is how Cuba got the way it is now. So the reason why I'm talking about politics, in addition to sharing what's happening in Cuba, is because it can very well happen here in America. Because what leftism is pushing here, the Marxist agendas, the socialist agendas that are being pushed here, ask any Cuban in Miami, and they will tell you that's exactly how Cuba started. And you might think it's extreme, but it's not extreme. It's the truth. Politics is how Cuba got where it is. They convince the people to accept a communist regime under a disguise of a utopia. These corrupt governments and establishments all around the world, US too, US government is corrupt too. They have really ripped us away and stolen from so many people their lives, their freedom, and it all goes back to corruption, money, and power. I'm asking everyone who's watching this to dig into what's happening in Cuba, watch the videos. There are some very heavy, gruesome videos. I watched some today and I just sat on the floor crying for a while and just praying to Jesus because, again, very different to hear it and to see it and even harder to realize that this is nothing new. This has been happening for over 60 years. For those of you who live in America, Stop saying America is oppressive. Stop saying America is the worst country in the world. If you hate America that much, if you don't wanna be here, trade places with a Cuban, they would take it in a heartbeat. Next thing I wanna talk about is, could this happen to America? Have we seen signs of socialism and communism coming to America? I know this is a very hot topic. A lot of people always talk about this, especially people who are conservative. So I wanna talk about leftism and how it actively is trying to bring that here. And you know, with everything I say, do your own research. Don't just take my word for it. Do your own independent research and form your own opinions for yourself. It's ironic to me that the same people who don't fight for freedom in the US who supported unconstitutional orders the last year and who were actively promoting socialist policies are now you know, saying freedom for Cuba when they don't even know what that means, when they don't even realize that they're promoting the same agendas and policies in America that would lead America to socialism and to communism. One easy example would be censorship, as we've seen with cancel culture and with censorship, that is the road towards totalitarianism and to silencing your opposition. Every communist country starts with silencing their oppositions, controlling the food supply, controlling medicine, controlling resources, and controlling the money and then taking the people's guns and their ways to defend themselves. A few things that have happened in the Biden administration that should raise a red flag to everyone. Biden allied groups, including the DNC, plan to engage fact checkers and work with SMS carriers, so your text carriers, AT&T, Verizon, et cetera, et cetera, to dispel misinformation about vaccines that are sent over social media and via your text messages. So in other words, they are going to be censoring, fact-checking your private DMs and your private text messages. If you're okay with that, honestly, no. <laughs> I shouldn't have to explain any further of how this is terrifying you know imagine you send a text message to someone about hey you know did you see this about the vaccine and then you hear a little fact check say oh that's not accurate if you're okay with the government fact checking your private messages and telling you how to think because that's what fact check labels do right it tries to alter and change the way you absorb information 
I don't know what else to tell you. I really don't. It's not for the greater good. It's not to dispel misinformation. It is to slowly start taking more and more control and more and more privacy away from the people. If there is someone out there who doesn't see an issue with this, just replace Biden with Trump and imagine Trump and his administration spying on your text messages and your DMs. Can you imagine how the news would react to that? I mean, they would act like the sky is falling, but with Biden, oh, it's no big deal. It's for misinformation. You don't really think that, do you? No. <laughs> Jack Posobiec posted on Twitter. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He's former military intel. He posted that the Biden administration is now planning on releasing a list of conservative social media influencers that were followed by January 6th defendants and who questioned the integrity of the 2020 election. Um, he said the list will also include members of Congress per a White House official. Um, he said in the database, they're apparently putting all of these memes in there, which I don't know what that has to do with anything. The White House official's comment said, they're using any bit of material they can online or otherwise use as proof of radicalization. Printing pages of Telegram and Discord conversations, numbering in the thousands, YouTube comments, whatever, look for this in early September. Which also reminds me, did any of you guys get the pop-up on Facebook that says, do you or someone you know, are they being exposed to an extremist or something like that? I didn't receive it, but I saw people posting it, how they were getting these alerts of like, do you know someone who's becoming an extremist or something like that? Do you see how fast the country is just like, straight downhill since January. Any leftist who is okay with the censoring and the shadow banning and all of these things that are happening, I think they're so privileged to be in America, to live in a free country where you have all of these rights and opportunities that they don't even think communism or socialism could ever happen here. And if they're for communism and socialism, they don't really know what that means. They have this utopia idea of a society. I don't think these people on the left realize that they might be coming for conservatives now, for people that are on the right now, but they will come for them too. You know, communism and socialism does not stop with one party. It comes for everyone. It just has to divide the people first. People that are conservative that are like fighting against cancel culture. And I know there are some people as well that aren't conservative that are fighting against cancel culture and against censorship. And that is phenomenal. We should all be, you know, standing together for that and be united in general. Once everyone standing for freedom is silenced, there will be no one left to stand up for the leftists who wanted us to be off social media, who wanted us to be silenced and wanted their opposition canceled, um, there will be no one left to stand for them. It's something that's so simple to understand, but I think there is a spirit of pride in America right now where people are not willing to admit that they could be wrong or that their side could be wrong on certain things. You know, they hated Trump so much that they just can't see anything else. Like the Trump derangement syndrome is at an all time high where you know people even see someone wearing a red hat and they like lose it when it's a hat. That is what the corrupt media and the propaganda has done. When you can see on the news a journalist standing behind a burning city saying, this is a mostly peaceful protest. And people believe it, even though their eyes can see that the cities are burning, people are dying, businesses are being destroyed, but it's mostly peaceful. Going back to the Biden administration, Biden and Jen Psaki both announced that they're going to go door to door to get unvaccinated people vaccinated. I was like, come again? First and foremost, how do they know who's vaccinated and who's not? How do they get access to my private medical records, which is illegal? You know, just to put it in perspective, in the Trump administration, they weren't allowed to ask if people were US citizens for the census, but somehow now it's okay to know who's vaccinated and who's not and to show up at people's doors and solicit them. There is more than enough resources out there for people to get it if they want to get it. That's everyone's personal choice. It's their medical freedom to decide if they want to get it, get it. If you don't, you don't. Instead of providing ways to strengthen our immune systems, to keep people healthy, to keep them fed, 
They want to come door to door and give you the shot. This was never about your health. It's always been about control. Socialism and communism is what leftist politicians want to bring to America. That's their agenda. They want to give you everything for free. The truth they won't tell you is that nothing is free. Everything comes at a price. And socialism and communism comes at the irreplaceable price of your God-given freedom. Even with stimulus checks, they wanted to keep printing, keep printing as the U.S. goes now towards hyperinflation, the highest our inflation has been. Even your stimulus checks cost you so much in tax dollars people don't even realize. Instead of opening up businesses so people could get back to work, they just want to give you free money, but nothing is free. If you look alone at the bills Congress tried to pass, if you look at the stimulus packages alone, like the one in December, where they wanted to give hundreds of millions of dollars to other countries for their armies, for gender studies, for, I think there was one for salmon. I mean, there was all of these random things. There was, I think it was millions as well. If not, it was hundreds of thousands to redecorating Congress. Like all of this money for things that would not help American citizens, but the people who pay the bills, the American citizens, were put last. We're begging for 600 to $1,200. In the December one, I believe it was, even people who were not citizens of America, that were in America, were getting paid more in stimulus than Americans. People are literally begging for the money they paid and you're not even getting a fraction of that back and you're paying so much in taxes to get it. What sets America apart from other countries is our second amendment. Because if that falls, America falls, point blank, period. The left wants to convince you that you don't need guns, you don't need firearms. Guns. Lots of guns. Their logic is less guns equal less gun violence. But if that were true, how come cities like LA, New York, Chicago have such high gun violence crime rates? Criminals don't care about laws. They're going to get their firearms regardless if the government says they can have it or not. What's happening in Cuba, the videos that are surfacing of the dictatorship, communist regime in Cuba, killing these people like animals is beyond disturbing. I read this morning in Daily Mail an article saying, the communists have lost control. First Cuban demonstrator is killed after police open fire on peaceful protest while anti-government reporter is arrested live on TV as unrest continues. I don't believe this is the first person that is killed by any stretch of the imagination. I think what we're being allowed to see, what the media is twisting and turning, I don't think this is the first person. What's crazy to me are people who live in America, who vote for socialist policies and socialist agendas, and then think this could never happen in America. This can happen in any country. Any country can devolve into communism because freedom is not free. I say that all the time. It comes at a very high price. And I hope if you live in America and you've taken this country for granted, you've taken freedoms for granted, seeing all of this happen in Cuba, like all of the people standing up after 62 years, I hope it makes you look at America in a different light. America isn't perfect, but to me, it's the best country in the entire world. I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and I will be back with my final thoughts. As always, I'm going to leave you with some scripture. Today's verse comes from Psalm 14, 6, which says, The wicked frustrate the plans of the oppressed, but the Lord will protect his people. No matter what evil governments and evil people do here, the Lord will protect his people. If you are a follower of Jesus, you know this is not our forever home, and we were not promised anything here, but in the end, God will have his way. And you know, I also keep thinking of the verse, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free from John 8, 32, because we see this season right now of exposure and people waking up against corrupt governments all over the world, including in America, people seeing things that they never saw before. You know, God is ripping the veil from our eyes and showing us so, so much. I also want to read something from Instagram just as a word of encouragement to those of you who are speaking truth right now and who are speaking God's truth. So this came from Sean. I don't know how to say his last name. I think it's Fucht. I probably botched that, but he posted, Many believers think there is an 11th commandment. 
thou shalt be nice. It muzzles them from speaking truth to a godless culture that interprets biblical values as bigoted and mean-spirited. Don't buy that lie. Our wild altar calls prove the cry in the culture for truth. You know, so many people will say, oh, but you're a Christian. It's not very Christian of you. Jesus was persecuted for offending people. He made people so upset with the truth and they could not handle it. Don't let anyone try to muzzle your voice or tell you because you're a Christian, you shouldn't mix your religion with politics when the Bible is covered in Jesus raising voices in politics to save his people. When people are uneducated in politics, they can't vote for things that benefit them because they're going based off what politicians say. Like I said earlier, Fidel Castro, he painted this beautiful utopian world that didn't exist and the people went off of his word. But socialism, communism, dictatorships, they never work. If you're an American, like, look at freedom, look at what the party you vote for, what policies do they pass? What do they stand for? Does their platform rest on freedom? Is it grounded in Judeo-Christian values, in biblical truth? Or is it grounded in censorship, in cancel culture, in silencing your opposition? It's very simple. I will continue to pray for Cuba. I'll be posting updates on my Instagram as I do with everything, with faith, politics. All of my prayer warriors stay in the word, keep praying and keep close to God. Please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you hit the little bell so that way you know when I upload. I uploaded two videos this week, which isn't usually what I do, so unless you hit the bell, you might not know that I uploaded. Uh, and share this video with a friend, share it with someone who needs to hear this message. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe to my podcast, Liberty Before Lipstick. New episodes go up every single Tuesday. 